Hi, I'm Blake Axton. I'm the men's arms and shoulders single skull uh, for the U.S. para rowing team. I picked up rowing my freshman year of high school. I uh, wasn't really sure about it when I started. Uh, Mom thought it would be a good idea to try out, and I did, and I just loved it. Uh, you know, really never looked back. Uh, rowed all four years in high school, and then uh, my senior year of high school is when I got sick. Um, and after a long stay in the hospital and, and a whole bunch of complications, I ended up having both legs amputated to treat me. Uh, they got out of the hospital, um, recovered, uh, went off to college, and then picked up para rowing uh, when I started grad school, and uh, I've been doing that ever since. You know, when I started para rowing again, really, really, I just got it started with getting back on the earth. Um, I just graduated from college. I thought, okay, I need, I need a way to work out. I need a way to be healthy um, and just train on my own here. And the urge is really a great way to do that, especially for, for someone with a disability. Um, so I picked it up, got into it. Uh, pretty soon the urge times got down to where I could be competitive. So I thought, okay, if I, if I can give it a shot, maybe make a U.S. team, I'll give it a try. Uh, and that was what persuaded me to go get in a boat. And uh, it's, it's really one of the best decisions I've made. You know, coming out of, uh, out of college and after getting sick, I really didn't want to get back in a boat. Um, it, was, it was sort of a bitter, a bittersweet memory. You know, I loved doing it, but I knew it was how different it was going to be. It was going to be an entirely different motion, an entirely different sport, a single versus the big boats. I just really wasn't sold on it. Uh, but the chance to compete for the United States was too much to pass up. And I'm so glad I, I got over that, uh, over that hesitation because it's just, it's just been the best, uh, the best experience I've had. It sounds cliche, but representing the United States really is a dream come true. Uh, especially for an athlete in a sport like rowing where this is the pinnacle, this is as high as it gets. Uh, being able to make a U.S. team, uh, you know, be a part of a team again. Uh, you know, I hadn't uh, been on a team per se since, uh, since high school and uh, it was great to get that feel back. Even though I was rowing a single, I thought maybe I'm kind of alone here, maybe I'm uh, a, bit of, a bit of an island. Uh, I didn't have that experience at all. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, love my teammates, I uh, love getting to support each other. Um, you know, we're, all, we're all part of Team USA. And uh, as one of my first teammates told me on my first, uh, first trip to world, the World Championships, one team, one dream, uh, and they meant it. And that's pretty special. Yeah, this year was a tough year for a rowing standpoint. I mean, the, the event's definitely gotten faster. There's been a big shift in the event towards athletes with sort of the highest allowable disability. And as countries have figured that out, they've gone and recruited athletes that can you know, essentially have more function than whoever they had before. So regardless of what you might call your regular athletic ability, you know, higher function is going to win. So as we've seen that, the event's gotten much faster and it's just gotten much more competitive. So I uh, was fighting to get into the A final this year, missed it, um, had a tough progression, but uh, got through the B, got in the last, uh, last qualifying spot and was, uh, was relieved to have made it through there. Um, so live to fight another day. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for Tokyo on the training side. I'm as healthy as I've ever been, um, in good shape uh, you know, for this time of year. I feel, feel great. I uh, don't feel overtrained. I feel like I'm rested up, but still moving faster, still improving. Uh, so very optimistic about the chances for next year. So we'll, we'll start winding it up here probably, you know, February, uh, you know, February, uh, March, and then try and you know, try and get through trials, and then come back, come back through um, the summer and really try and peak for uh, for the Paralympics. Yeah, I'd, uh, I've been looking at the the canoe kayak events for a couple of years, thinking. You know, really enjoy rowing, kind of got a sense for a small boat on the water. Um, it was a very similar uh, muscle groups that you're using, especially in my event, in my classification. A lot of overlap, so I thought maybe it's, it'll be a good complement to rowing. Um, and most of that's true. Now, it's a much shorter event. Uh, it's only 200 meters, so it's less than a minute sprint. Uh, so that's been an adjustment, but, uh, but it's been great. It's been a ton of fun. Yeah, you know, we're here at, uh, here at the office at uh, Diamond Hill Capital Management where I work, and it's just been a great firm. Uh, I've actually worked, worked here in various capacities as an intern during school and then came on full-time uh, two weeks before the Rio Paralympics. Um, and it's just been a great, a great place to work. It's a very supportive firm, great, great team we have here. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's been encouraging to know they've, they've supported growing all the way along said, hey, you know, what you need to do to make it happen, go do it, and uh, it's, it, it, it just takes a lot of the stress out of, you know, trying to do, do both at once. It's a full schedule, and we get a lot done around here, I, I'd like to think, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a great team, it's, it's one to share the experience with, and it just makes all the difference to get to come in every day and, and, and work with people that, that you respect and